Hey guys, more Blakey here and welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be walking you through how to get some first person shooting, including finding the point of impact, accessing any game objects the bullet hits, some simple reloading and more. So make sure to like and subscribe if you find the video helpful. Let's get started. So in this project I'm going to go over what we have so far. So this project is taken directly from my first person tutorial, which is the video prior to this one. So make sure to go and check that out if you're looking for some first person movement. And it basically entails the directional light, our ground game object. We've got our player, which includes a player capsule, the orientation, so we know where the player is facing. And then the camera position, which is where the camera sits. And then we've got our camera holder, which includes an empty game object, which has our cam holder script and then our actual main camera. And finally, I've just got two basic red cubes that we have enemy one and enemy two. And on both of these, we have an enemy health script, which we are going to be accessing later in the video. So the first thing we need to do is, is set up the placement of our gun. So I'm going to place it under our main camera. So I'm going to go into my camera holder game object here, then go onto our main camera. So your setup might look a little bit different, but I still recommend placing it under the main camera, wherever that may be, just so your gun will follow the camera no matter where it is. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag my gun model here. Now, the reason it is sideways is because I modeled this about a year or two ago. And sometimes when you import models from Blender into Unity, they can import sideways. It's not a massive issue. We can fix this directly in the editor. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag it directly onto our main camera here. And as you can see, my Z orientation, which is the blue arrow, I'm going to drag it forward. And you can see that we can actually see it on the main camera here. So now we can just do some adjusting. So, you know, we're not shooting right, we're shooting forward. So I'm just going to rotate this 90 degrees and then I'm going to move it down, move it to the right a little bit. Maybe we can make it a little bit smaller, kind of position it like that. I think for now that looks pretty good. Now from there, I'm going to make a canvas, which is going to hold some UI elements for us, such as a crosshair and a small string that is going to represent the number of bullets that we have. So I'm just going to right click in the hierarchy. I'm going to go to UI. And I'm just going to go straight to image as it will create a canvas for us. And I'm just going to type in crosshair for the name. It will automatically add an event system. We don't need to worry about this. Now, if I click on the canvas and I press F, it's going to focus in on it. I can press this 2D button up here and it will be 2D for us. Now, if we go on our crosshair, you can see that we want this obviously directly in the center. So players know where they're aiming. So I'm going to go to this little rect transform component here. In the hierarchy, I'm going to click on this little square we've got going on. This middle one, if I hold Alt and click on it, it is going to center our image and it is going to anchor it in the middle. So no matter what screen size your players have, it will always remain in the middle. Now I'm going to go on source image and now you can use anything for this. But I'm simply going to use a little sphere. I can just shrink this down. Obviously, you can see this is quite blurry. This wouldn't be what we would want for a real game. But for this, this is just fine. And now you can see we have a nice little crosshair in the middle where players can see where they're shooting. And we can change this to black or white, whatever we want. One other thing that we need to do before we create a script is we need to go on our canvas here, change the canvas scale up to scale with screen size on the UI scale mode. From this, you might need to alter your UI elements again. So make sure to do that. I've got to say right now, this guy is looking hella menacing. So I think it's time we give him some actual functionality. So what I'm going to do on our player here, I'm going to add a new script and I'm just going to type in player shooting. From there, we can press new script, create an ad. And we can open this up in Visual Studio. So what we're going to do is we're first going to create a public float. And we're just going to call this range. We're just going to use this float for visualization reasons. And for now, that's the only variable we're going to create. Before we make some actual functionality, I want to show you how this is going to work. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a function that Unity have called on draw gizmos. And this is so we can essentially debug in the editor. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set it initially to red. So gizmos.color equals color. Dot red. And then what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to do gizmos.drawRay. So essentially, gizmos.drawRay is going to do what it says. It's going to draw a ray and we assign the two points that the ray is going to be from. So the first point is going to be from the camera's central position and the end point is going to be in a direction of camera forward. So essentially, we've got the point which the ray will start at, which is the camera's position and the direction it will go in is directly in front of the camera. Because if we do it from the gun point, as the gun is not exactly central to the camera, it will not shoot to the center of the screen the way an FPS accurately would. But you're going to be able to see this more visually in one second. So what I'm going to do for our point, I'm going to type in camera dot main. So we're referencing the main camera. And this is defined by the main camera tag. And this should be automatically assigned for you when you create a project. So you shouldn't have to do anything there. So what we're going to do is camera.main.transform.position. And then for the direction, we're going to do camera.main.transform.forward. 
and we're going to multiply this by our range factor. Now, if we go back into the editor, now, if you select gizmos at the top here to make sure we can see any gizmos, you can see that there actually isn't any ray that we can see. And the reason for this is because our range float here is set to zero. If we increase this, you can see that a ray starts to appear. You can see this red line right here. This is facing directly in front of our player. And this is where we want any bullets to be hidden. So if we was to fire from here, we'd want the bullet to travel along this line. But we're gonna disguise it later on in having the player think that the bullet starts from our gun point, when in reality it won't, as if we did it like that, like I mentioned, it would not be accurate. So now we're gonna actually create this functionality. So I'm gonna create a function and I'm gonna call it shoot. And I'm actually going to make this public as you might want to reference this from other scripts. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a raycast hit and I'm going to call it hit. And I'm going to write an if statement inside here. I'm going to do if physics. So we're referencing anything inside this physics class. And I'm going to do physics.raycast. Now inside this, we're going to do something very similar to what we did on the gizmos. So we're going to reference the camera's main transform position. The same direction that we used dot transform dot forward. In terms of what raycast hit we want to reference, we're going to reference this we used up here. So we use a term called out and then hit to reference our raycast hit here. And then finally, for the distance, we're going to use that range factor we used at the top here. Instead of multiplying the direction, this function has a separate field for where we can reference our direction. So now this is our statement. So what we're saying here is if we collide with an object with these parameters, what I'm initially going to do is I'm going to set up a debug.log which is gonna give us any information we pass into it in the console. And we're just gonna do hit.collider.name. So essentially, so if our ray hits any object with these parameters, the object that we hit is gonna be passed into our console. But this alone is not enough to work as we're not actually calling this function from anywhere. So what we're now gonna do is in our update function, we're gonna do if input.get mouse button down, and I'm just gonna use zero which is referencing our left click. I'm just gonna call that shoot function. So now I'm gonna extend our range to about 10, just so it's long enough to reach any of the objects in our scene right now. And now if we hit play, you can see we're not seeing anything in our debug. But if I let, but if I left click on the ground here, you can see right in the bottom left, we've got that ground console. And if I click again on the sky, you, we're seeing nothing as there is no object here. But if I aim at one of our cubes and left click, you can see it changes to enemy. And if we go to our second one over here, that changes to enemy too. So while we don't actually have any visualization for any bullets, we already have the basic functionality for it. So now we can just add some visual flair to make it seem a little bit more like a gun. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a particle system on the end of our gun, which will trigger whenever we fire, which basically gives the player a visual cue that we've just fired the gun. So what I'm gonna do on our gun, I'm gonna create an empty game object and I'm just gonna call this gun point and I'm just going to drag this and make it the end of our gun exactly where the end of the barrel is and from this we're going to go to add component and I'm just going to type in a particle system and now you can see we've got these random purple squares flying out obviously this isn't quite what we want so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to our renderer down at the bottom and I'm going to assign it a material I'm just going to type in a default here up at the top and then I'm going to add sprites default now from this it's just a case of altering our particle system until we have some sort of accurate looking set of particles so i'm going to change some settings here and then i'll show you them when we're done okay so this is the particle system i've got now so if i press play here you can just see we have a little particle flash and this is all it takes to show our player that the gun has fired so essentially we use the emission tab here to create a burst I haven't changed any of these settings, but what I have changed is setting the rate over time to zero, but setting the count of particles here to 30. We've got a color of white, a very short lifetime, a fast speed, and a pretty small size. And the only other thing I would say to change is I set the radial here on our velocity over lifetime to three. This means the particles will expand outwards from the center. And finally, I set the shape of where the particles will spawn to a sphere and just shrunk this and you can see this right here. This is where the particles will spawn from. So now if I hit play, you can see that the particles do expand, but it is just so fast and it ends so quickly that you can't really see it, which is exactly what we want. Back in our script, we are gonna reference this particle system. So I'm gonna go public particle system, and I'm just gonna call this PS for particle system. And now in our shoot function, every time we call it, we can just do ps.play. Now, before we test this in the editor, make sure to assign the particle system just like that. We can drag it in. And now if we hit play, you can see that every time I fire our gun, you can see we have a very basic flash going on. And that's pretty great. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this particle system we made and I'm going to trigger that particle system at the point where the bullet collides with another object. So the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to grab our gun point here. I'm going to right click on our particle system and I'm going to copy this component. Now in our hierarchy, let's right click, create an empty game object and call this particles. Now we can paste in this particle system. Now if I press F and focus in on it and press play, you can see that it still works. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to set it to something like 0.4 and maybe we can add a little bit of lifetime to it. And finally, I'm going to go onto my assets here and I'm just going to drag our particles down there to make it a prefab. And now we can get rid of it in the hierarchy. Now back in our player shooting script, I'm going to grab a reference to this game object. I'm going to go public game object particle object. And what I'm going to do underneath this debug.log, I'm going to type in instantiate because what we're going to do, we're going to spawn in this particle object wherever the bullet collides with an object. So I'm going to do instantiate particle objects because that is the game object we're going to be instantiating the point will be hit dot point and the rotation can just be quaternion dot identity because the rotation doesn't matter so we can just say it to the rotation that the object already has now on our player shooting script we can drag this particles prefab into our slot here and now if we hit play and we look around if we hit the floor here you can see that we get particles on both sides we get it on, on the end of our gun and we get it wherever we fire as well and we can even set the range to something like 30 like I have here, which means that particles will spawn even further away. So you can see them just in the distance over there. And if we go all the way over here, you can see that it's still firing and hitting our game objects. So now I'm going to show you one way we can actually interact with game objects in our game, such as the enemy health. So what I'm going to do, the two enemies that we've got in the scene, I'm going to give them both the same tag. So I'm going to go down to add tag. I'm just going to type in enemy with a capital E. I'm going to select both our enemies and I'm going to give them both the tag of enemy. And now in our script, we can actually check for this. Inside our shoot function, we can check if hit.collider.tag is equal to enemy as a string. So if we shoot the enemy and the bullet collides, we can do hit.collider.gameObject. So from this alone, we have referenced the game object that we've just hit, if it is the enemy. So now what we want to do is we want to get a reference to the enemy health script. So we can simply do dot get component enemy health inside and outside bracket and then we can reference the health float and we can just take away for example five so we can do dot health minus equals five which is basically taken away five so to reiterate in this shoot function we cast out array in front of our camera at whatever our range is that we assign in the inspector if we hit an object then we will tell the console what object we've just hit we will instantiate some particles at the point that we've just hit if the object that we've just hit is an enemy then we are going to take away five health from that enemy that we have just hit now if i select our enemy over here in the editor you can see that's got a health of 10. now if i go ahead and hit it right here like this you can see that that health goes to five. And if we do it again and it goes to zero, you can see the enemy disappears because in that enemy health script, I've got it coded. So if the enemy's health goes to zero or below, then the enemy is destroyed, which is exactly what has happened here. And we can do the same for this one over here. So we can just shoot it, shoot it again, and it is destroyed. And that is one very simple way we can access the enemy health or other scripts in your game. So now the last thing I wanna go over with you is having a bullet reloading system. So what I'm gonna do at the top here, I'm gonna make a new variable. It's gonna be an integer, which is just gonna be bullets. And we also need to reference our UI. So I'm gonna do at the top, we need a new namespace, which is using unityengine.ui. This means we can access things like text and buttons and images. In our case, it's gonna be text. So we're gonna do public text ammo text. So the first thing we're going to do is every time we shoot, we need to have one of those bullets taken away. So if we have five and we shoot, we go to four because, you know, that's how bullets work. So the first thing I'm going to do here at the top, I'm just going to type in bullet. I'm going to press minus minus semicolon. This basically just means take off one. If we was to do bullets plus plus, it would just add one. So now that we've got these bullets, what we're going to do at the top when we actually fire, I'm only going to trigger this shoot function if our bullet integer is bigger than zero because otherwise we don't have any bullets therefore we cannot shoot so that's all well and good we've got that functionality but what we don't have is a way to actually reload the gun so let's do that first and then we can go on to handling the ui so in our update function i'm just going to have a very simple system that checks if our bullets is equal to zero and input dot get key down 
Then we're going to type in keycode.r for reload. Make sure to have two brackets here. Then curly bracket in and out. Then we can just set bullets equal to 10. So if we have no bullets and we press R for reload, the gun will reload and the bullets will be set back to 10. So now the last thing we need to do is just have the player be able to see this using the UI. So what we're going to do here, we're going to reference our ammo text. So we're going to go ammo text dot text is equal to bullets dot to string. So this is basically going to convert this bullets integer to a string. So we can set this string to the number of bullets the player has left. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go to our player here. We're going to set the initial bullets to 10 and we are going to drag our ammo text into the field here. And if we hit play, you can see that it says 10 at the bottom and every time we shoot, it goes down one less. So we can shoot all the way down, but when it gets to zero, you can see that there's no particles firing. That's because the gun is no longer firing. And you can see our enemies, no matter how many times I spam on them, they are still alive. And that is not what we want. So what I'm going to do now, exactly as we wrote in the code, I'm now going to press R. And you can see that they've gone back up to 10 and now we can finish off our enemies and that is perfect so guys that pretty much wraps everything up in this tutorial hopefully there's enough content in here to get your fps started let me know if you've got any questions in the comments and make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed guys i'll thank you all very much for watching today's video and i'll see you all in the next one bye